get ready. So now here today, what I want to be able to do is I want to talk about the, uh, the coming of the kingdom of God. It is, the, it is the, really the last prophecy uh, in, in terms of things prior to the ending of all things. And it, it is, in my estimation, the most important teaching uh, to be taught because Jesus is coming back again. Now think about it in, on this wise, right? Think about it on this wise. The, the, Jesus is coming back again. Well, what on earth is more important? Not the presidential election, right? Uh, not uh, global warming, right? Not you buying a new house or, you know, are you getting married or uh, you becoming prosperous? None of those things are important. The most important thing that anybody ought to be preaching today is that Jesus is coming back again. Jesus is, that, that is, my, my brother, my, my sister, there is nothing more important than the, 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 the teaching that Jesus is coming back again. And, um, you know, I, first of all, we got Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, is indeed the last prophecy. And it's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, that we get all of the, the chronicles about the, the tribulation, about how it's, why it's going to happen. And in that, Jesus puts all the false prophets that I call jackals, you know, people like, you know, over there at Brooklyn Tabernacle and down at Lakewood Church, that they're jackals. And it also in this Matthew 24, Jesus closes out the Jewish age by destroying the temple. Now, Solomon built the temple, but Jesus destroyed it. Uh, well, actually, this temple that Jesus was talking about in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 1 and 2, actually, Herod built that temple. But Jesus destroyed it. Why would he destroy it? Well, you don't need it anymore. Because the, the cross and the blood was, was you know, so we're here. So we got the, all this is going on at present. And now we got uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, where Jesus is talking about, actually in, ver, in, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 29, he says um, um, that, um, where is it at? Um, immediately after the tribulation, in those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Uh, and uh, the star, star shall fall from heaven and the power of the heavens. Be, and then shall appear the son of uh, the sign of the son of man in heaven. This is this is the, uh, the, the, the actual date. This is the, 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 the activity of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got 29 verses in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, that tell us in the last prophecy what Jesus is going to return. And then in a few moments, I'm going to go to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, where uh, Jesus says that there's some standing here that shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So the, 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 there, there's no other message more important. While do we not talk about the fact that there's a presidential election going on right now? Do we not talk about the fact there's a race riot going on in America right now? That, uh, 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 that Joseph Marsh, Waverly Marsh, says there's going to be a riot. Uh, uh, there's going to be a massive, unorganized, another civil war with the the, the Johnny Ribs against the Union Jacks. Uh, Waverly Marsh says that um, in that letter I read on this past Saturday, and he's talking about people being put in slavery so they can see all of what's happening. But should, so we should talk about that. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But the most important message right now, the message of message of message is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like before the birth of Christ in Bethlehem, going back 2,000 years ago or so, very few people were preaching the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even then, very few people, when John the Baptizer found out about who Jesus was, he, had been, he himself had been living for 30 years or so. And then he began to say, make way, make straight the paths and every mountain shall be brought low and every 
valley shall be exalted and every crooked place be made plain. John the baptizer was teaching. So ultimately, all roads and all sermons ought to lead to the, that Jesus is coming back again. And that's what we have been preaching, that Jesus is coming back again. Now, what we have focused on in that segment of teaching, of course, is on the elect, the people that will be the new disciples in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I, were, I referenced the other day that movie called The Book of Eli. I don't know if y'all heard me talk about that the other day when I was teaching. But every time I see that movie, you know, I think about me. You know, I don't know, you know, don't, don't, look, don't, don't listen to this. I think I somehow another I'm boasting or something like that. Just listen, right? I think about the fact that he preserved the word of God. The one, the, 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 the theme that runs through that movie is the preservation of the word of God. And this was made by Hollywood, by the way. These Hollywood people made these, these scoundrels, these Harvey Weinstein's people, right? These rapists and pedophiles. They're the ones who made this. Uh, but every time I think about that, I, 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 the, the one theme in that book is that movie is preserving the word of God. And, and the thing that I think everybody ought to be very much aware of if you're watching the book of Eli, it, that movie, is that when the, when the tribulation, when the great explosion took place and there were just a few people left on earth, the most valuable thing on planet earth was not gold or money or any of those kinds of things because all kingdoms had been torn down and there's just a few people left. You got to see the movie. You really got to see it. And if you see it, you know what I'm talking about. Have you seen it rather? And, but the most valuable thing on planet Earth after that time with the few people that were left was the word of God. And only one man had it, this fellow Eli, right? I guess that's his name. I don't know even know what his name was. But he, that was the most, and people were killing to get the word of God. Right now, they'll kill you if you got the word of God. You see what I'm saying? So I, yeah, that, that's a fascinating movie, the book of Eli, because the Bible was the one thing that everybody wanted. And the Bible was the one thing that the, they had burned them all. They had these universities, colleges, these schools, these governments had all banned them and burned them. And there were none around. And people, even if they, after they, people had heard about the Bible, but they had never seen one before, but they'd heard about it. It's a fascinating movie, the book of Eli. It was a fascinating movie, the book of Eli. I said, it's a fascinating, but the people that burned the Bible, they taught, and there was only one left on planet Earth. And this fellow Eli had it. And it was his job to get that book to be published so it could be read again by the people, the Word of God. Every time I see that movie, I think about myself. You know, because you know, I, it did, I, I look around here and I see all these people, you know, see Brooklyn Tabernacle with all them choir members and all that singing going on up in there and everything. And all the people, you know, going all these uh, jackal holes, these barns and everything. But they're not, they're, they're even saying, well, we're not to look at this part of the word of God anymore. This part of the word of God is irrelevant. You know, they're the ones that are tearing down. But even Hollywood knows better. I mean, even that, the, the, the makers of movies in Hollywood know that what they're doing in the Lakewood Church and the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church, they're going to regret it. They're the ones, Brooklyn Tabernacle and the Lakewood Church and others like that, I just called it because most people know who they are. Not that they're important. They're not important. But people know who they are. So I don't have to, you know, if I talk about some other church, Presbyterian church, somewhere in Missouri. You don't even know anything about it. Or Wichita Falls, Kansas. You don't know anything. But they're doing the same thing. But in that book of Eli, the most valuable thing was the who's got the word of God. And people were killing to try to get the word of God. And I can tell you this right now. There are going to be people rushing the doors of the outlaw church uh, trying to get the word of God, or they're going to be logging on. And thank God for the opportunity to log on. Thank God for me. To, so the, the, what needs to be taught now, my brother, is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you say, well, Pastor, you haven't been mentioning it that much. But, well, no, I, but I've been talking about the tribulation. And, and now we're up to the subject matter of the return of the, of the, 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 the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the establishing of the kingdom of God, the coming of the kingdom of God. We're up to that point now. We're, we're up to that point now. But I wanted, you know, as this fellow David wrote to me the other day, and I took a moment to pray a few moments this morning, because I think that there are a lot of people who want to say, Pastor Man, I want to get on board. But, you know, like David, David says something like he says, he says, well, I'm going to move to Harlem 
And Atla, he calls it Atla. He said, I'm going to move up there and I'm going to rent a house and I'm going to join the church and I'm going to set up a, uh, a app called the Elect app. <laughs> and, and, and then he, 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 you know, he said something the other day about how um, that uh, I, when Jesus said there's some standing here in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 28, that he wasn't talking about today. He was talking about years and years and years and years, and years ago. So he said that scripture doesn't apply. He's saying there's no prophecy to the scripture, Matthew 16, 28. What he's doing, what, what you have to understand, and as a pastor, a leader, I've been doing this for a goodly number of years. When David said that, when Jesus said that, that was just for the people that were standing there because he was talking to the ones that were standing there. He said, Pastor Manning, and you weren't standing there, so he wasn't talking to you. But no, listen here, what David is saying. He, he, he wants to ask the question. He wants to ask the question. He wants to say, Pastor Manning, is that scripture prophetic? Does that scripture go beyond the ones that were standing there to us today? But he ain't going to say that because he got to humble himself to say that. And he got to get down off his high horse or come out of the Southern Baptist Church or the Presbyterian or the United Methodist or whoever. Maybe he's a Catholic. I don't know. It could be real well. Could be a, a Catholic of all things. David could be. But the thing of it is, is this, rather than him, he asked the question in a backhanded way. He said, Pastor Manny, when Jesus says something standing here, he just meant those that were standing there today, that that scripture does not mean you standing here now. But it does. The scripture is prophetic. The, the whole intent of the scripture, David, is prophetic. Remember that the, 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 the thesis of the scripture is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the uber pro pro prophecy. It is the most prophetic thing ever spoken, the return of the Lord. So the whole scripture is prophetic. Put it up there again, Mr. Engineer, so David can see this. The whole scripture is prophetic. Not only, David is saying, well, Pastor Manning, those, he, Jesus said that just those people that were standing there right then, right now on that ground and breathing right then and there, that was not talking about today. But what he wanted to ask me, what he, what he should have said, well, Pastor Manny, does, is that scripture prophetic rather than trying to insult me? Well, I understand because he just don't want to come out and humble himself and say, Pastor Manny, I need you to be my teacher. He don't want to do that right now. He'll do it. He listens to me every day. But no, David, listen, the scripture is prophetic because watch this. It says, verily some standing here that shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. When the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, David, is the most prophetic thing that you've ever heard in your entire natural bone showing up stomp down boom shakalaka life. You never heard anything more prophetic than that. So the whole scripture is prophetic. So those, when he says some standing here, that was prophetic as well, not just to those that were there at that day, but today as well. And tomorrow also, should God let tomorrow come without a complete annihilation of all things evil and wicked. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man in the will tell you what God has said. Whether to say yea or nay. Whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.